as we prepare to enter into worship this morning, beloved, let us pray. Gentle and gracious God, once again you awakened us into a bright and beautiful morning where you remind us not only of our beauty, but the beauty that lives within us and that you call us to share with one another and with your larger creation. And we are empowered to do that in even larger and greater ways as we seek to worship you with our entire being. And we do just that on this day. So as we come into this space, this space that we have deemed as sacred, we come with a deep hunger. We come with a spiritual thirst and we know that it's in your presence that all of our needs will be met. So as we sing and as we pray and as we listen and as we receive, fill us once more to overflowing that the brightness that is the radiance of Christ might continue to shine through us, warming our hearts as well as the hearts and souls of all of those whose lives intersect with our own. In this time that we share together and in this time that we share with you, may you be glorified and may the name of Jesus the Christ forever be lifted up. For it is in the name of Christ we pray. Amen and amen. Please rise as you're able for our processional hymn on page 8 of your bulletin for the beauty of the earth. seated. Good morning, saints. I want to welcome you this morning to worship here at St. John's Metropolitan Community Church right here in the heart of Raleigh, North Carolina. We are blessed and excited that you have taken the time out on this Lord's Day as we gather once again to worship our God in spirit and in truth. I want to remind us to please be sure to fill out our welcome card to make sure that we have record of your attendance with us today. And if you would, if you place that in the offering basket during the offertory portion of worship, we certainly would appreciate that. Again, if there are messages you need to get to us or prayer requests, you can note that on the back of the card as well. The Sunday News highlights events and activities coming up in our community of faith as well as some future events that are rapidly coming our way even as we stand in this space um, on this morning. I want to extend my gratitude to some 37 plus folk um, who really converged on this property on yesterday and helped us in that first phase of the move from Glenwood uh, over to Maywood. It was a beautiful day um, to do the move and I thank everybody um, minus a few sore, sore muscles maybe this morning. Amen. Um, everybody had a wonderful 
wonderful time on yesterday. So thank you so much to, to those who rented trucks and those who offered automobiles and those who offered their muscles and their backs. Um, if you get over to Maywood, you will see that something happened over there yesterday. And so we're looking forward to the ongoing events as we prepare to move to that space um, and have worship beginning on June the 8th. Want to let you know, I talked about this on yesterday when we gathered, that we still have need for volunteers over the next couple of weeks. And as was suggested, I tried to the best of my ability, um, given David's help, we've compiled literally a two-page list of things that need to happen over the next couple of weeks. So if you will, if you pick up one of these lists today before you leave, peruse the list, the number of volunteers needed. If you're able to assist in any of the areas, the contact people are listed. And if you can note that on the back of the card or email me directly so that we can get an email out to you just as a reminder when your services will be needed. Volunteer for all of them if you like. We just need to get all this stuff done before June the 8th so you can see me or one of the deacons after services today for the listing. Want to remind us that this coming Saturday at 2 o'clock will be the memorial service for Lady Taj Mahal, Tanae Barnes. That will be here in this space. Terry Steep will be officiating that service. Um, there will be several folk who have been a part of this community of faith years ago who will be a part of that experience. It is my hope that those who are current members and regular attenders of St. John's will be present for that service. Tanae was an instrumental part of the music ministry program of this church for many, many, many years. And not only was she a minister in the church, but she was certainly a lay minister and witness outside of the church as well. And so we want to celebrate her life and her witness on this coming Saturday at 2 o'clock. And then after the service at 2 o'clock, we're going to converge on the outside of the property as we prepare for Maywood. So if you have the gift of working in flowers and shrubbery and all that kind of stuff, um, see, uh, actually Vance is not here today, but talk to Sandra or send her an email to let her know that you'd be willing to help next Saturday afternoon. Then on next Sunday, next Sunday morning, we will have again one service, one service at 10 o'clock a.m. That will be our full service. It'll be a hybrid of both 8.45 and 11. We do have a guest speaker um, for our services next Sunday morning. That will be Terry Steed. I think that God's bringing that full circle in lots of different ways. And so we want to invite you to be a part of that experience. We will be having um, a fellowship after that service. And so don't want you to miss out on that. And then after we have fellowship, we'll com be converging on this building once again to do the final pack of things that are left over. So if you can spare some time for us um, on next Sunday, we would certainly appreciate that. Then the first Sunday in June, June the 8th, which is Pentecost Sunday, will be our first worship service over at 622 Maywood. Just as a matter of note, our 845 will then change to 9 o'clock a.m. So we'll be having a 9 o'clock service and 11 o'clock service begin June the 8th. And so you don't want to miss out on all the activities that are going to unfold on June the 8th. And um, I'm looking forward to that. And there will be a uh, lunch after that service as well. And so invite folk. We've sent out invitations and letters to folk. And I've received some correspondence this week from those invitations and looking forward to see some folk we haven't seen in a while. So it's going to be a great time of fellowship and celebration and re reconnecting with one another and want you to be a part of that. I hope and I pray that's it for the announcements. My right hand is at home sick. So I hope I've done everything he's asked me to do. And so with that said, I want to invite us now, respecting the boundaries of those around us, to greet one another with the love and peace of Jesus Christ.
As we prepare to go to our God in prayer this morning, we certainly want to lift up the ongoing prayer requests in our community of faith, as well as requests that we've received over the last few days. Um, we got word a couple of days ago that Tony McLean's grandmother um, passed away, and so we want to lift up Tony and his entire family as they mourn her passing. Um, and as they prepare to funeralize and celebrate her life. And so we want to send love and prayers um, their way. Continue prayers for Willie Driver Wilkins' mom, who is not doing well in the western part of the state, um, for Rusty's mom and for his brother as they continue to journey through their various stages of physical healing in their lives. For all of those who are going to be gathering this coming Saturday to celebrate the life um, of Tanae Barnes and those who will be impacted as a result of that witness, Pastor Carl and uh, David and Vance are at home dealing with various illnesses of various degrees. Um, the doctor actually put David in bed for the last two days. And so there's lots around that. I think most of that is exhaustion. And so we want to lift him up for rejuvenation and renewal um, as we prepare to go through these next couple of weeks, as well as for all of those um, who are taking this journey with us. Um, the closer we get to it, the more excited I get. And so I know God is up to something good. And so I pray that we might pray with and for each other, that as we take this journey together, we will be open to receive all that God has in store for each and every one of us. With that said, I want to invite us now to join together in our call to prayer. Gracious God, we come to you on this new day, and we come knowing and faithfully respecting that you will meet us where we are, knowing that you woke us up this morning and you were waiting for us to come to you and just simply say good morning. God, I thank you for your presence and your spirit of life that you give to us, and I thank you for this day and this opportunity to come meet with you again, to worship you, to grow together, to just simply be. God, we come to you, and yes, we bring you our all. And our all includes our praises, our excitement, as we move from this place to a new place. We bring ourselves and our fears and our concerns and our doubts to you as we stay here and we move to this new place on Maywood, wondering what you have in store for us. And God, we know that even in this, despite all that, the plans you have for us are good, are amazing. And we must rest on that word, and we simply ask that you continue to remind us in ways that we understand that your plans for us are good. God, we ask that you hear the prayers of our hearts, that we have lifted up names of people and concerns that we have. We, we lift up Vance and David and Carlton who offer their service to you in so many ways, both here and outside of here. And God, I ask that you simply just grant them rejuvenation and renewal. For Tony's family, as they move through these stages of grief, that remind them that you were their comforter and that you have received their loved ones with open arms. For Lily's mom, as she faces questions of her health and slowly declining. For Rusty's mom and brother. For Terry, for the gatherers who will come and be celebrating the life of Tanae Barnes, or otherwise known as Taj Mahal. God, we ask that you simply be with Jeremy's sister, Brenna, who is going to lose her vision for her and her kids and for the reality of what that loss of independence looks like. God, I ask that you simply take care of them and hold them close in this time. God, there are so many times in which we just go to you and we say, hey, we have this question. And then we go ahead and make a decision instead of waiting for listening to you. God, for people in those places, 
of choice and decision making. I simply ask that you meet them where they are and grant them the patience to hear you out. God, for these and all the unspoken prayer requests we have, I ask that you simply just hold them. Remind all of us that you've got this. God, we also just bring forth our praises and our excitement and just gratefulness to have another day to be with you, to be in this world, and to offer ourselves as we are. God, I ask that you be with us during this time of worship. In your name we pray. Amen. Today's scripture readings, um, we have two. First one comes from Philippians chapter 1, verses 1 through 6. Paul and Timothy, servants of Christ Jesus, to all the saints in Christ Jesus who are in Philippi, with the bishops and the deacons, grace to you and peace from God our Creator and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God every time I remember you, constantly praying with joy in every one of my prayers for all of you because of your sharing in the gospel from the first day until now. I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work among you will bring it to the completion by the day of Jesus Christ. The second reading comes from Ephesians 1, chapter 1, verses 15 through 19. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, and for this reason... I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the creator of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know God, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which God has called you. What are the riches of God's glorious inheritance among the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of God's power for us who believe according to the work of God's great power? It Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. A reading from Paul's letters to the Philippians and the Ephesians. Glory to you, O God. Oh, sorry about that. This is the good news about God <laughs> for the people of God. I'm following the suggested order of life. Please rise as you're able for the singing of our Gloria. <laughs> Timothy to the church at Philippi write I thank my God every time I remember you constantly praying with joy in every one of my prayers for all of you because of your sharing in the gospel from the first day until now I am confident of this that the one who began a good work among you will bring it to completion by the day of Jesus Christ I would offer for our consideration and reflection this morning. Something very simple. Thank you, 805. Thank you, 805. And if there is a subtitle for what we're about to experience, the subtitle is this, Finding Your Story in the Larger Story. Finding Your Story in the Larger Story. So God, we thank you for these moments where you invite us to reflect, you invite us to remember, and you invite us to rejoice. We thank you, God, for the opportunity to share in this experience of your living message that continues to give life over and over and over again. So as we listen to you and as we listen for you and as we receive everything you have for us this day, invite us in newer and refreshing ways to not only remember our story, but to find our story woven into the larger story that is about the good news 
the good news of your unconditional love for all of your people as revealed and modeled to us and for us in the person of Jesus the Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen and amen. This is one of those opportunities in the life of our community of faith where we get to be reminded that God has done a whole lot in our lives and in our midst since February of 1976. Hundreds of folk have come through these doors. Hundreds of folk have found their lives in many respects over again coming through these doors. Hundreds of folk have found their hearts healed and their hearts mended. And some folk have found that God really had called them to a larger mission and ministry in their lives. There are so many different ways that we can say thank you to God. And for some of us, it's hard because we really don't know how to start or where to end. But somewhere in the midst of it all, there have to be opportunities where we have to express our gratitude for what God has done and for what God has promised to do in the future days to come. And so we've intentionally taken some time over the last couple of weeks to invite people to share their story, to share their gratitude, to share their thanks about what God has done for them in their lives since becoming a part of this community of faith that we know as St. John's MCC. One of the things that comes, very, comes out very clear as we listen to these stories is what Paul has said to the church at Philippi. The one thing we are confident of is this, that the one who has begun a good work and each and every one of us will indeed bring it to completion until the day of Jesus Christ. In other words, the journey is still ongoing. We are not ending something. We're just beginning a new chapter in an ongoing journey. And as we continue to move together, as we continue to move as individuals in and through the power of the Spirit of God, may you too, in the next days to come, find your own voice of gratitude, find your own voice of thanksgiving, find your own way of saying thank you to 805 and thank you for the opportunity to be a part of giving birth to 622. With that said, I want to invite you to listen to the thank yous that are being shared. Whenever you're ready. Thank, Thank you, you, 805 Glenwood. Oh. We're glad to be here. And I want to say that I have many memories here and looking forward to having many more memories at our other place. Thank you. God bless. Thank you. <laughs> it was June the 4th of 1995. That happened to be Pentecost Sunday, but as a as a uh, Southern Baptist, we didn't pay a whole much a whole whole bunch of attention to that. But uh, it was it was the first Sunday of June of 1995. I came sneaking in the back door hmm. right just before the 11 o'clock service. Like any good Southern Baptist, I stopped at the door and I looked and I noticed that there must be a whole bunch of other good Southern Baptists because this was the first pew, actually this pew right here was the first pew that had a seat vacant. All the rest of them were full and then and, 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 and all the way to the side and, and I wanted to come in and sit down and be completely unnoticed. Um, and I did. I came in and I sat down right at 11 o'clock, the service started, the music was beautiful, the choir was singing. It was, uh, we had some good congregational songs, I remember. I remember the Gloria, I remember, um, I, I, I remember so many things about that service. Hi, I'm Pastor Carlton Rutherford, and I'm Pastor of Congregational Care here. I was at St. John's when we were on Dixie Trail Road and we moved here. So I've been here for a while and it's been real nice being here. I looked forward to coming here. You know, we once thought we were going to go to a funeral home, but we chose this building. We are about to leave. There have been a lot of times that we've been here and we've 
been here longer than we had hoped, but there are a lot of memories, a lot of joy, a lot of people have come through here that have made me what I am and who I am. And it's because of this church that I felt good about my relationship with God. So, 805, we're really going to miss you. You've served us well. And we hope that we have been all that you had hoped that we would be. Blessings. Thank you, 805 Glenwood. Thank you, 805 Glenwood. Hi, I'm J. Allen Kelderman. I've been here at St. John's since day one. I was actually the first person to show up to respond to invitations for a Bible study back in 1976. Um, I just wanted to talk about a couple of things. I was here, of course, when we purchased this building and moved in here and uh, we, we made it our own. We relocated the, the sound system. Audio video was dear to my heart. And uh, we painted, we did all kinds of stuff. And I remember what a joyous time that was when we took possession of this property and it became our worship center. Uh, one thing that's, that's interesting is this cross that hangs in the center. That was a gift from the church that we met at for 16 years. Community United Church of Christ. They had the very same cross hanging, and so we worshiped under that cross for uh, about 16 years. And when we uh, left there, moved into this facility, they had one made just like theirs, and they gave it to us as a gift. And it was my pleasure to hang this cross up here, and it'll be my pleasure to help relocate it to our new ministry center. One of the things that re I really remember well was the, the uh, passing of the peace. And, you know, uh, Southern Baptists didn't do the passing of the peace like, like we do at all. And, uh, and so I was, I was kind of taken aback when all of a sudden the two people, I mean, I, sat, I was sitting in this, in this pew and the two people who were sitting directly in front of me, who I thought maybe would ignore the fact that there was somebody back here, they turned and they looked at me and they said, are you new here? <laughs> is this your first time? And of course I had to say, well, yes, it is my first time here. Thank you very much. And, uh, and they said, well, we're glad you're here. And they turned back around and actually went to greet other people and a few other people came to greet me. And uh, I thought, well, that's okay, I'm still safe. St. John's MCC, St. John's Metropolitan Community Church has been an awesome place at 805 Glenwood. This has been a place of love, of fellowship, of friendship, just a wonderful place. And now we're moving on for a new beginning but 805 will always be in my heart as a place that I came to just to drop somebody off. And almost four years later, <laughs> I'm still here. And I think I will be here for a long, long time because St. John is an inclusive place. For me, it's not just the LGBT community. It's the L-G-B-T-Q-A-A-I-N, whatever. This is a place of Christianity, a place with Jesus with skin on. Anyone, anyone can come to St. John's and know that it's a wonderful place to be. 805 Glenwood, you have been a blessing. And now it's time to say goodbye. Goodbye to this building, goodbye to this location, but never goodbye to the friendships and the community that has begun here and will forever be in my heart. Thank you. Uh, another cross that we use is our processional cross. 
And I, I recall when it was presented, it was at our 20th anniversary celebration, and something in the back of my mind, I, I knew there was something special about it. Well, a few weeks ago, I was actually transferring audio cassettes to the computer, to uh, digital files, and I heard our former pastor, Reverend Wayne Lindsay, uh, introduce this cross as a gift from the membership class that completed right before our anniversary, and I heard him say on the tape that it was being dedicated in honor of J. Allen Kelderman, and I was very honored, of course. So I'm thrilled to see that cross. Just a few tidbits as we move from this facility to our new worship center, but our church is still the church. We are the church. Well, now the reason why I snuck in the back door on the, the, the first Sunday of June in 1995 was that the previous day, um, I had, um, and, and for a few days before that, I had outed myself, I had, had admitted to my wonderful, beautiful ex-wife that I'd been lying to her for the 15 years that we were married. And, and so I snuck in because I was a broken, very guilty, very um, very sad man. So Reverend Lindsay went ahead and he pronounced the, uh, the, the absolution of our sin. And we broke into song. I will remember that song forever. Because what had happened is that uh, Pastor Wayne had taken a song that was fairly popular at the time, a tune that was fairly popular at the time, and he changed the words. He changed the words to say that we are worthy. And we sing the song every now and then uh, around here and and it still grips me knowing that uh, there was a time when I was broken and I needed to know that it was okay good morning I am Deacon Jean Candelario I have been a member of St. John's roughly around two years now. Um, coming to St. John's has definitely enriched my life. It definitely has brought me many blessings. And I'm just gonna take a short time to say thank you to the pastors and the entire congregation um, for accepting me for who I am and for loving me. And most of all, for enlightening me on what my callings were and to live them out here at St. John's as a start. So when we get in the new space, um, hopefully they will be enriched even more, but it really has truly been a blessing in my life. And I thank you all. Okay, Pastor, wish you well. It's uh, good to be here today. Um, St. John's continues to go through exactly what Amy is talking about today, about the season of change. Change is a difficult, challenging, beautiful, devastating, enjoyable possession in life. I've experienced many changes in life, but there's one thing that is stabilizing in all of the changes. God is the same. My love goes to you and my prayers are that you will continue to be able to grow in the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Thank you very much. I didn't know what I was going to say to 805 Glenwood other than to say goodbye. I um, remember when we first moved in here, 
in 92. That was a big move then, and it's going to be another big move to 622 Haywood. I'm looking forward to it. I hope everyone gets as much joy out of this move as I'm getting. Okay. So, farewell, 805 Glenwood. You have been used to the best of our ability, and hopefully the new place will be used to the best of our ability. Thanks to God. Amen, amen. Then what happened is that the service, now like any good, good Southern Baptist, it was up to me to leave as quickly as I could. So I didn't want to be noticed. Of course, I'd already, had, I'd already participated in the tissue ministry and had my little, little pile of tissues all around me. And, uh, but the two guys that were standing, that were sitting in front of me, that had stood in front of me during the passing of the peace, that they happened to be William Stokes and his partner, Jimmy Hill. Well, they turned right around as soon as the final benediction was said, and as I was packing up my tissues and other stuff to get out of, uh, get out, out of the place as quickly as I could, they turned to me, and both of them, instead of just shaking my hand, as we would in, 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 in my Baptist church, they hugged me. Praise the Lord, everybody. I um, just want to give a few brief words about what St. John's has done for my life. Um, this building that we're leaving is where I came and found comfort and was able to be who I am. I'm really grateful for Pastor Brendan and the entire staff. I'm a part of the praise team and I'm a part of the communion team. And I thank God for a place where I can just praise God and freedom, something I never had before. I'm so looking forward to being able to expound a little more and draw others to Christ at our new location that's going to give an opportunity for those that are in recovery to be free and come to praise God. And if you're not doing anything on a Sunday, you're always welcome to come and lift up God with us. I thank St. John's for helping me help myself. And today I am a better person because of the teachings and because of the freedom to give God the glory. Have a great day. Well, here we are. It's time to say thank you to 805 Glenwood. And all I can think about is what this space has enabled through this community of faith. It's been a place where people who were lost, maybe on their last ropes, found salvation, and even been that found God's grace and mercy, and most importantly found love. The St. John's community that grew in this place has helped foster me. Thank God that memories don't get knocked down with a demolition. Just going to put it out there plainly. Thank God we all have our memories to keep that no one and no circumstance can tamper with. So even though the building will be torn down, the memory of this place and what has transpired here will always stand strong. I love you, 805 Glenwood, and thank you. So as we get ready to leave 805 Glenwood, I just wanted to say a couple of words about what this building uh, means to me. Uh, this church has been my home church for the past 10 or so years. And you know, people refer to this church as the little purple church. Well, I had passed, you know, I've been in the area for many years, almost 30 years, and I had passed the little purple church lots and lots of times on Glenwood, but I had not visited. And the one time, really the two times that I did visit, the church was in search of a new pastor. 
Now, if you have ever come here, you know that our pastor, Pastor Brennan, will tell you, you don't show up here by accident. And that visit, those two visits, uh, were not by accident for me because those two visits were instrumental in changing um, my view on church and changing my church family. I became a member here shortly after that. And I've been very pleased to be a member here because the people here are what makes St. John's what it is. It's the church family. Even though the building has a great location and it's very comfortable and cozy, it's the church family that makes this place what it is. We've got families, we've got kids, we've got people of all colors, uh, we've got so much diversity that it's just you know, kind of difficult to explain if you've never experienced it. So as we get ready to move to another location, I'm reminded that it is the church family, it's the people, it's the community of faith, as we call it, at St. John's that made this building, this facility, this location what it was for me, but I also know that it will make our new location at 622 uh, Maywood a special place, and it would make any other location, XYZ on Highway ABC, special as well. It's the people. It's the church family. So while I have fond memories of this building and this facility, and while I may even shed a tear when they, uh, when they tear it down, I know that the family and all the good things that goes with this church family will go with the people wherever we go. I had heard about the Purple Church on Glenwood Avenue, but never taken it much, uh, given it much thought. It's not really purple anymore. <laughs> the red has been bleached out by uh, the sun and the wind and the rain over the years. That was 19 years ago. Um, the, the benches are still pretty hard, and as I get older, they're harder and harder to sit here. The carpet looks a little bit extra worn, and and uh, and and uh, we, you know we've done the best we could with the, the uh, with keeping it look as nice as we can. But it's not really this bench, this pew, or or even that pew, or the one I'm sitting on that is a heart of what this place is. It's the people like William Stokes and Jimmy Hill and the others who said that they wanted to be my friend. And so that's what moves with us. Um, sure, it's going to be sad to say goodbye to 805 Glenwood, but. Um, it's not purple anymore, <laughs> and that's okay. We'll be, build new traditions, we'll have new stories, new stories of redemption and reconciliation and recovery that will be wherever we are, because it's the people. It's the people that go. Thirteen years ago, in August, I stood here in this sanctuary realizing that God had called us to a larger mission and larger ministry. I was also very clear in that moment that that ministry was going to move beyond these walls at some point because there needed to be a new chapter. And here we are 13 years later, 20 years after the purchase of this property, where God has created an opportunity and paved the way for us to move into a new chapter in our lives together. 805, in many respects, has been an unforeseen gift to me. I came simply to preach one weekend, and I've been here ever since. That's why I believe in divine appointments, and I believe this move is about a divine appointment. A divine appointment that invites us to move out of our comfort zones into a place where God truly can shine through us in greater ways and in communities that desperately need to hear the message that we have to reclaim in this place and through our witness each and every day. 
So Glenwood 805, 805 Glenwood, however you see it, I say thank you to you. Thank you for being here. When others needed a place to come as a safe haven, when others needed a place where they could have their hope renewed, where others could come and have their health, their spiritual health restored. Thank you, 805 Glenwood Avenue, for some preacher from Northern Virginia who had no idea that there was a ministry waiting for him and for being open to receive me when I came to live into that yes from God. Thank you, 805, for reminding us that ministry doesn't stop with the building, but ministry and church is about God's people. It is about creating a community of welcoming saints. It is about creating an opportunity for folks to feel and experience love. It is about creating an opportunity for the witness of Christ to be experienced and felt with each and every individual who walks through our doors. In the Gospel of John, Jesus reminds the disciples, you did not choose me, but I chose you. And here's the interesting word in that verse, I chose you to go and bear fruit. Isn't it interesting, the choice of words? Jesus didn't say, wait for them to come to you but you go to them. And I think this is a part of what this move is about. It's about moving to the next place where God has created an opportunity for us to do ministry in and amongst God's people, to go to a place where people are hungering and thirsting for justice and rightness in their lives, to go to a place where transformation possibilities exist and where we ourselves can bring our own transformed lives into that place and into that space. Thank you, 805 Glenwood Avenue, for equipping all of us for such a time as this. And my prayer is that as we move from this place to the next place God has appointed for us, we will do so with great expectation, for I am clear beyond clear that this is the next phase of our experience of moving to that destined place of greatness that God has for us. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Glenwood Avenue. Thank you, God. Thank you, saints of Christ. Thank you for all you are and continue to be. Blessings continue to live in and under God's divine favor. Amen. The Apostle Paul said, I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the creator of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know God, so that with the eyes of your hearts enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which God has called you? What are the riches of God's glorious inheritance among the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of God's power for us who believe according to the working of God's great power? And the good news for us today is that God's power is still working and God's not done with us yet. Thanks be to God for God's indescribable gift. Amen and amen. Good morning, everyone. My name is Della. I'm part of the stewardship team. And as we 
say thank you to Glenwood, 805 Glenwood. Let us now remember to say thank you to God for the gifts that he has given to us. At this time, as the ushers come forward, we're going to give back those, some of those gifts to, to God that he's so graciously given to us. Thank you. So God, as we've taken this time to look back on how you've blessed each of us and how you've blessed us on this week, we give forth a mere portion of what you have given to us. So God, we say thank you and we ask that you bless this offering and these tithes and our talents and our gifts, God, and we ask that you allow us to use these to the best of our ability to spread your kingdom and your word and wisdoms of love. This we lift in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. My brothers and sisters, as we gather once more around this table, I want to remind you that in metropolitan community churches, we affirm, celebrate, and offer an open communion. For this table represents the fullness of God's unconditional love for all of God's people, as demonstrated through the life, ministry, death, and resurrection of the Christ. So on this day, we invite all of you to come, just as you are, to share at God's table, being nourished by the bread of life and the cup of salvation. This table is open and is prepared for you. God is with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to our God. Let us give God thanks and praise. It is right to give God thanks and praise. These elements of the earth may by human hands become blessed and holy by the power of God's Spirit. And in them we find the source of life and strength for our spiritual journey. On the night that he was to be handed over to suffering and death, Jesus, during a meal in the upper room, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and he said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after the supper, he took the cup of the fruit of the vine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples and he said, drink this, all of you. This is the cup of the new and everlasting covenant, which is sealed in my blood for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink of this cup, 
you proclaim my death, the Lord's death, until he comes again. Please join me in the responsive mystery of our faith, that when we eat this bread, we remember Christ's sacrifice for us through the breaking of Christ's body. And when we drink from this cup, we remember Christ's love poured out for us through Christ's blood. We celebrate the gifts of life that we have been given and experience together the wonders of God's love as we proclaim again the mystery of our faith, that Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ is here, and Christ will come again. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. You are invited as the ushers direct to receive the gifts of bread and fruit of the vine by simple intention, and then return to your seats for a time of personal prayer and reflection. We request that you observe the sacredness of this time as others receive the Holy Eucharist through song, prayer, and meditation. grace and abundance. We thank you once again for this holy mystery you've provided for us through the wheat of the field and the fruit of the vine. As we prepare to leave this place, unite us and your church throughout the world that we may continue in Christ's ministry of love and service wherever we are and in whatever we do. This we ask in the name of Jesus our Lord. Amen. Please rise as you're able for our recessional hymn. There is within my heart a melody.
we prepare to go back out into God's world, I remind us that there is a whole world out there awaiting the witness that lives within you. Seek to be that light and shine brightly. Seek to be that witness that plants seeds of hope and healing and joy and love seek to plant seeds to let others know that there too is a place for him or her at God's table and that God awaits their arrival each and every day and wherever you go and as you travel in the days to come until we meet again in this space remember one time next week 10 o'clock don't miss out allow these words to minister to you to strengthen you and to help you along the way I am God's beloved deeply loved richly gifted Highly favored, abundantly blessed. I am the gospel of it, deeply loved, richly gifted, highly favored, abundantly blessed. We are gospel of it, deeply loved, richly gifted, highly favored, abundantly blessed. Embrace the promise and go in peace. Amen and amen.